good morning to those of you who are watching us by our live stream. We pray that you too are able to say that you'll never be defeated. There is an opponent to your soul who desires you to be not only defeated, but he wants you to be destroyed. He wants you to be destroyed. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Jesus did it. I don't have to work for it. Jesus did it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. We cry, oh. Numbers chapter number 12. Oh, nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. We're going to begin at the first verse of Numbers. This is the New King James Version. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And so they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. And now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. I want to speak to you this morning from the thought, from this subject, skin or sin? Skin or sin? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help me to be what you have commanded, to say what you have required, and for us, Lord God, to be better for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is um, a sermon that I did some very intense study for, and um, last week I shared a sermon entitled The Kingdom Polls, and, and that sermon got tremendous um, uh, feedback. I, I received a number of questions and comments uh, from various ones, and it was obviously a, uh, a sermon type that I would classify as a disruptor, if you will. And uh, it's, good, it's a good thing to have uh, disruption in the course of our lives because what, is, what tends to happen is uh, structures are shaken and loose things fall away and what the Lord desires remains. And I believe that this sermon is going to be similar in uh, its uh, impact uh, with the help of Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I think God wants me to stay right in this space uh, to, to drive us uh, to consider our ways. And, and so... Uh, we follow the leading of the Lord 
and pre present uh, the word of God to us. Uh, the Bible says that the, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, and, and, and I believe that. And so this text that we've just read in Numbers chapter number 12 uh, presents an interesting scenario. It takes great care to identify uh, that um, Moses and his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam are at a relational crossroad. And the Bible tells us that Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses and it says, because the reason they were speaking against Moses was because. A lot of times we can point to an action, but we may not always understand why the action is taken. And the Bible does not leave that in a unknown variable. It tells us that it happened because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. That was what caused the friction and the disruption in their mutual uh, pursuit. They're, they're going towards a greater destination. Now, a Cushite is a person from a region south of Ethiopia where the people are known for their black skin. And although they, there are debates about this interpretation by those who are uncomfortable with what the Bible says, which is the truth and the realism of the Bible, that's what God tells us is the reason for their struggle. Now, furthermore, Jeremiah chapter number 13 and the 23rd verse tells us that can the Ethiopian, which happens to be the same Hebrew word translated Cushite in, New, in Numbers chapter 12, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Can also you do good who are accustomed to do evil? This is Jeremiah chapter number 13 and verse 23. He's pointing to that this is a matter of someone's skin. The way God made them. The Bible deals with it, Pastor Roy. The way God made them and their confronting of their brother, their leader, Moses, was because he married a woman with black skin, dark skin. You see, the focus is being drawn in this way because God is exposing something in humanity. He's, he's, he's exposing something that's in the camp. He's exposing an issue that caused his anger to be released. Now, my prayer, my prayer, uh, uh, Deacon Keith, my prayer for, for, for today is that the understanding of everybody be open. That it be opened. According to Luke chapter number 24 and verse 5, he says, Then he opened their understanding that they may comprehend the scriptures. That, that's my prayer for you. That's the reason why I'm preaching this and teaching this, going down a pathway that is uncomforting, a discomforting, and, and, and maybe even unfamiliar. It may be troubling to some people, may be unsettling to some people, but it's still an issue just as sure as a leopard has spots. Some of us have issues that lie deep within that must be addressed. One of the, one of the uh, chronic uh, concerns of our age is why the pulpit doesn't deal with certain things. There are press, pastors and preachers and, and, and theologians who will tell you and who have, who have defied the, out the cry, speak to this. Tell us what is the heart of heaven. Tell us what is the Lord saying about this thing. Why does this happen? What is God saying? And they'd say, 
I'm not going to touch it and you can't make me touch it. Why? Because they want to stay in the safe place. They, they want to deal with a matter only at the uh, uh, consequence that it keeps them uh, with filled pews and filled plates. And so we deal with this because the Bible deals with it. We touch on this because it was important enough to God to record in his holy writ that there was an issue that rose up before his manservant, that rose up within the ranks of his people. And it says that this happened because of the Cushite woman. Do you recall the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson? It seems almost to have been in another decade, but it was only 2014. It was the onset of the cries of outrage and protest that have swept the United States of America. Ben Watson, who the former professional football player, posted on his Facebook page something that was more prophetic than it was political. He said, and I quote, ultimately the problem is not a skin problem, it's a sin problem, end quote. I don't know how uh, that is processed by the person who has wrestled with painful realities that have so long been associated with the color of your skin. However, I want to offer perspective today on the matter because God does in his holy word. He said it wasn't a sin problem, I mean, excuse me, a skin problem, but a sin problem. He said it wasn't a skin problem. In other words, it wasn't that a person of the Cushite origin is the problem. It's actually a deeper issue. It's a deeper issue. What this statement seeks to draw our attention to is the root and not the fruit. At the root of all human condition is the heart. Everyone say the heart. The heart. Racism is this root issue. Because Racism is when we draw distinction based upon someone's skin complexion and the origin of their, eth their ethnos. Basically taking a issue with the creator. And this was in the camp of God. This was in the household of faith. Moses was the set man. And they challenged Moses about the ethnos of his wife. And then, watch this, watch this. Then that spilled over into questioning his calling. Because I know you were trying to, trying to figure out how in the world does that tie? How, how are you going to tie this in, preacher? Because after they identify their issue with him because of his Cushite wife, they now say, doesn't God speak to us too? So they tied the issue in such a way that it's to question now whether he's hearing God, walking with God, because you've obviously aligned with the wrong ethnos. You see, you see, racism is a huge hot button issue in our society today. Our country has a long history of race related issues, starting of course with slavery, but then extending into segregation, civil rights, race riots, and more recently, the various shootings such as Ferguson, Missouri, Charleston, South Carolina, and Mother Emanuel, and, and many others. Sociologist Michael Emerson states that we live in a racialized society. 
one in which race matters profoundly for differences in life experiences, life opportunities, and social relationships. Recently, you know, amidst us pastors, there have been some articles that have been cir circulating, and one was by Dr. Albert Moeller, who is the president of the Southern Baptist Association of Southern Baptist Convention. And, and Dr. Moeller is on the record as having uh, denounced President Trump in 2016. But now in 2020, this same uh, individual has, ha is speaking something of a different nature concerning President Trump. And so in response to the article that Dr. Moeller has written, John Piper, another majority cultured uh, 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 evangelical pastor and theologian has written an article in response to that. And, and John Piper is now under, John Piper is now under attack because John Piper has been speaking the word of truth. He's been identifying simply what the word of God says. And he's been talking about the definition according to scripture of race, of power, defining what leadership looks like according to the kingdom model. And he's catching tremendous, tremendous attacks. This same Piper offers the following definition of racism in a 2004 statement. He says, he says, racism is an explicit or implicit belief or practice that qualitatively distinguishes or values one race over other races, end quote. Piper has an uncommon sobriety to speak truth even when it is unpopular, to speak on difficult issues, to raise matters that God deals with even though some will want to be silent on them because it is culturally convenient or culturally costly. Notice that according to this definition, racism can neither be explicit or implicit. Notice that racism can also be a matter of either belief or practice. Let me say that again. It can be a matter of belief or practice. He continues to say it in a quote, the focus of this definition is on the heart and behavior of the racist. The heart that believes one race is more valuable than another is a sinful heart. And that sin is called racism. The behavior that distinguishes one race as more valuable than another is a sinful behavior. And that sin is called racism, end quote. The heart, according to Jeremiah 17, and verse number nine, the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately wicked. One version says it is desperately sick. And then it says, who can understand it? So isn't it ironic that Luke chapter 24 says that I hope that you will come into understanding and now we understand that the topical issue is not enough. We've got to be able to get to the root of issues. And it's hard to understand what a root issue is, especially when that root is inside of you. It's hard to see it when the root is down on the inside of you. But the Lord desires us to still endeavor with the help of Holy Spirit to deal with the root 
of the issue. My wife loves to say, she said, you know, we got to deal with the root and not the fruit. Stop dealing with the top of the thing. Stop cutting off the, the leaf and thinking that you have satisfied the matter. You got to deal with the root. What's down beneath the surface of this issue? Jesus said that out of the heart come evil thoughts. Listen, listen to this. Jesus said this in Matthew 15 and 19. Out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and slanders. That's Matthew 15. Out of the heart comes murders. Jesus went on to add, these are things that defile the man. The human heart is by far a greater problem than the shade of your skin. It's the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. We all need God to show us our heart. Especially those who think that they're better than a different people who have a different skin because it's a heart sickness. The Bible says again in our main text, Moses marries this Cushite and then Miriam, then Miriam and Aaron approach him. But the Bible mentions Miriam first. She was clearly uh, someone whom uh, God had his mind on. And, and, and then when the judgment was levied, it was levied against Miriam. And ironically, her issue was his wife's skin and God gives her judgment dealing with her skin. She came down with leprosy, which was the, the, uh, the, the, the destruction of her epidermis, her skin. It became white and demanded that you be cast out of the camp. And then Moses did an amazing thing. Moses starts interceding for her. Moses starts praying for her. Moses starts crying out for mercy for her. Asking the Lord for mercy for the very one who rose up against him. And therein is a message as well. It's a message to those who are the ones being marginalized and mistreated and, 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 and undermined because of your skin, you can't lose sight and not pray for mercy even for the one who has harmed and hurt and marginalized you. That there's a term, a Latin term called canis lupus familiaris. Canis lupus familiaris. It is the Latin term and it's a Latin name for the root species of the domesticated animal that we call a dog. Canis lupus familiaris. That is the original domesticated animal that we call a dog. Similarly, the scripture tells us that in the beginning, God created man. And from the first Adam, I'm telling you about Canis Lupus Familiaris because it was the original. And now I'm telling you about Adam, which was the original. And from the original man, from the original dog, we have all these other breeds. Shizu, Great Dane, Dachshund Hound, 
Connie Corso, German Shepherd. They all originated from the original Canis Lupus familiaris. And similarly with humanity, God created all of the diversity that we know from Adam. Adam. All mankind has come from him and we are all the same. And yet we are all fallen. Romans chapter number 3. And the ninth verse begins saying, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all, for we have all previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Meaning that all humanity, no matter where your origin, no matter where you land in the, di the, 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 the uh, diversity, all have sinned and fallen short. There is no righteous None, no, not one. There is none who understands uh, the, 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 the greater things of God. There is none who seeks after God. They, they have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. Uh, with their tongues, they have practiced deceit. Uh, their, their tongue, their throat is an open tomb, meaning that it is from the mouth that people are committing murders. The poison of the asp is under their lips. An asp is a snake. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. I told you my prayers that we will come into the place of understanding. Why? Because there is no fear of God. There is no fear of God. All of the things that we can point to about broken humanity tends to lead back to an absence of fear of God. When you look at racism, it is a failure to properly perceive who God is and to reverence him because there is no, no ethnos that is created in and of itself. We've all been created by God. It is him. That's the reason why he says, he says that we should not murder because we did not create. It's him. He did not give us this power. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. So, so, so Benjamin Watson, as I referenced earlier, he rightly reminds us that sin shows itself in our pride and in our prejudice. Psalm 51 and 4 tells us that it's against God that we sin. It's against God and done evil in in the sight. Our sin separates us from God and is highly destructive towards fellow humans. So, the, you know, the question becomes, is it social? Is it a social issue? See, when, when, when we hear people talk about the social conditions you can't stop there. Is it a social issue? I submit to you it's not a social issue. It's a sin issue. Sin is at work that causes individuals to be racist. Just as it is, sin is at work that causes a person to be a murderer. Just as it is sin at work that causes you to, to crucify someone with your tongue. It's sin at work. It's not a social phenomenon that God responds with judgment, but it is sin that receives the full brunt of his displeasure. It's not about the social structure. It's about the sin. We have been trying to address a, a deep issue by only dealing with the surface. And that's the reason why you can, you can have social advances, 
but never overcome. <laughs> let, let, let me say that again because I got five, five of y'all got it. You clap. You can have social advances where I'm, it looks like I'm making progress socially, but I'm not really making the kind of kingdom pro progress that God tells us is ours, and the reason is sin is still at work. It's not a social thing. It's a heart thing. The heart is still being wickedly fruitful. It's no wonder then that 1 John tries to begin to help us. 1 John 2 and 9 says, The one who says that he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is actually in darkness. This is, this is the reason why it's so... Listen, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm in the light, but... God's truth says I'm in the dark. That's a person who's lacking what? Understanding. Somebody say, Lord, give me understanding. See, 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 the scripture says uh, uh, in, in 1 John uh, chapter number, I think it's 3. Let, let, me, let me turn there real quickly. Uh, am I... In 1 John, let me get there real quickly. 1 John chapter number 3 or 4, it says if I, if I hate my brother, two and nine, verse nine of 1 John chapter 2, if anyone claims I'm living in the light, um, uh, and hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But if anyone hates a fellow believer or brother, is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by what? Darkness. Having been blinded by darkness. In other words, they are void of under. Standing. Go to Proverbs chapter number four. Proverbs chapter number four. Proverbs chapter number four. I told you my, my chief prayer in this teaching today is that we obtain understanding uh, according to Luke 24 and 45, that we obtain understanding. Now, Proverbs chapter number four and verse five. Proverbs chapter number 4 and, and verse 5. If you're there, say amen. It says, get wisdom and then what? Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. If my, if my heart isn't healed, then I can be in the midst of God's word and it profits me nothing because I have not obtained understanding. It's the understanding that changes the heart. It's the understanding that changes the heart. So he says, if you are just a wisdom seeker, but you don't obtain understanding of the word of wisdom that's being released you might as well just be in the midst of a whole lot of noise but don't comprehend anything that's being spoken have you ever been in a room where there are multiple conversations taking place you know maybe at a Christmas party or at a birthday party like I was at yesterday and and I just stood off to the side of the room for a moment and I listened to the five or, or six or seven different conversations that were happening in my vicinity and I couldn't tell you what all of them were saying. I heard it, 
I heard something being spoken, but I could not tell you what they said because I was not tuned in sufficiently. I heard the sound. Many people have, have classified themselves as believers. They go to church, but they leave the same, unchanged. Why? Because they were in the midst of wisdom being declared but they did not understand what was being spoken. And though, so they leave that place the same way that they came. They leave the place the same way that they came. Last week I spoke about three conditions. It's really heart conditions, but I, I called them uh, three types of Christians. The first, the, ter- the first type of com- Christian is the convenient Christian. And then the second type is the cultural Christian. And the third type is the committed Christian. A convenient Christian is only a a Christian because it is productive and effective and convenient to be classified as such so that I can fit in certain circles and move about and possibly possibly, uh, get some some uh, business deals from it. It's, it's convenient for me. You know, that's what grandma and them were. A cultural Christian is someone who doesn't want to be left out. They say that this nation is a Christian nation, and so I'll be a Christian because this is predominantly what most people in this nation are. But then the committed Christian is the one who really wants to hear the word of wisdom and understand it who applies it in their life, who understands the significance and the the weightiness of it. Come back to the text of Proverbs chapter number 4. Proverbs chapter number 4, in the fifth verse, he says, get wisdom, right? Get wisdom and understanding. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will what? She's going to keep you. Verse 7. With wisdom is the principal thing, meaning the first thing. However, I told you about canis lupus familiaris, but therefore get wisdom, but in all of your getting, get understanding. Get understanding. You can't afford to be in the midst of all of this wisdom that can't be applied because you don't understand what in the world it is, what it's saying, what it means to bring it to bear. What does it mean to apply it in your life? That there is no value in that. And so I've got to get the understanding. This thing is not social. It's a sin. It's not social. And so if you only put social structures in, you're going to continue to see the fruit of the greater root. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to give you three main points and I'm going to get out of your way. Three main points about what God deals with in Numbers chapter number 12. Our main text, for those of you who are just joining us, is taken from Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And it's dealing with God's set man, his main man, Moses, who decided to fall in love with this black woman. And and his sister and his brother took issue with him uh, because he married the Cushite. And then when he married the Cushite, this was the door opener for them to really get even the more into his business and say, you, are you the only one who God speaks to? You ain't the only one who God speaks to. In other words, we're, we're just as anointed as you. Look at that. Look at that. They tied the skin to the anointing, to the spirit. Right? They tied that to the, to, to the anointing, the call, the election, the selection of God. Racism is messing with people's calling. Racism is messing with people fulfilling divine purpose. Racism is dealing with people's divine purpose. Watch this. Here's the first point. Racism is against God. Racism is a sin against God. Racism is a sin against humanity. And racism is a sin against the gospel. 
Racism is a sin against God. Racism is a sin against humanity. And racism is a sin against the gospel. So it's no wonder that you have individuals who are talking about they don't believe racism exists in America. Because they don't want to deal with the root. They don't want to deal with the root. It's no wonder then you have individuals who don't want to preach like I'm preaching this morning. Because they don't want to deal with the root. Because the fruit is, is palatable to them. They don't, they don't have, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't cause their stomach any disruption. Their, their stomach is not soured by it. As such, racism is a serious sin which permeates our culture and affects us in subtle ways that we may not even be aware of at times. We are all affected by it in various ways and we need to dig deep in our heart if we are to root out this sin which divides us in so many ways. Racism, first of all, is a sin against God. No, no, know that this is true. Uh, uh, all sin is against God, but racism is a sin in particular because we were created in God's image. And so when I loathe someone because of their skin, it's like I'm telling God, you made a mistake. You, you made a mistake. I, I was looking on Instagram uh, a couple of days ago, and I came across this model, and I showed it to my wife. I said, baby, look at her. And she said, oh, wow. She said, it's, it's, and it was, it was this woman who probably is hailing from somewhere near Ethiopia or, or, or more southern because her skin was dark. I mean, she was dark. And my wife said, is, is she too dark for you? I said, no. Now, I know my wife is kind of creamy milk chocolate. In comparison to this woman, I mean, she was dark. And I said, no, I think she is beautiful. Her skin was almost like coal. And she was stunning. Stunningly beautiful. Some people would see that. And socially, that will tell you, yes, something wrong with her. In fact, y'all don't look at me so crazy. God dealt with this. This thing is so much a issue in America that some of us don't even know, allow ourselves to love ourselves because of the way the social structure has been set up. And it's as though God made a mistake. He knew that he was going to put extra melanin in that child. And still he says, that's my child. See, See, but the hypocrisy of this root issue would have you to believe that the ones who say they hate it really hate it. But history proves that that's not totally true. That's why we have the likes of a Strom Thurmond who publicly will take the platform and say he's against desegregation but has a black mistress behind the scenes. Politically, it is his advantage to say he's a desegreg I mean he's a segregationist. But privately, he says, he says, I, I, I need I need me a Brenda. I, I, 
I prefer a Jackie. I know it's uncomfortable, y'all. I know it's uncomfortable. I know. I know it is. I know it is. I, I, wish, I wish that I had the pews filled. May God send this into uncommon spaces. May God send this into uncommon spaces. God thought it enough to include verse 1 through 3 in Numbers 12 because it's tied spiritually to this natural manifestation. The, the, the second, racism is a sin against humanity. Secondly, racism is, is, is uh, dealt with because it's a sin against the human race. Diversity is of God. Man, this is not a man construct. This is a God construct. And the clay cannot look back and tell the potter, you made a mistake. God, why do, what, 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 God, come on now. You, you, you must have been not under the weather when you, after you made me and you came around and you made him. Oh, you made her. This is the reason why, listen, the debate continues about who came first. And, and the truth is, the truth is that you cannot get any other color from white. The only other color that you can get more from is black. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know it's difficult to hear, but this is, this is scientifically true. If you don't want to deal with the spiritual element of it, it is scientifically true that you cannot get derivatives from the lighter hue without adding more of the darker hue first. That's the reason why in the black community you have all different shades. It is an indictment, a sin against humanity. Finally, it is a sin against the gospel. Racism is a sin against God. It's a sin against humanity. And it is a sin against the gospel. We read in 1 John chapter number 2 already. I hope and I pray that we can comprehend fully the imperative of love. The imperative of love as established by God. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Verse 5 of, of uh First John says, and you who know uh, that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. But he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God is manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Verse number 10 says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever um, uh, does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. This is the sin against the gospel. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. From the beginning. There we are dealing with the beginning again. That we should love one another. Verse 12. Not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's 
were righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. We are all brothers and sisters deriving from one source. He who does not love his brother, the Bible says, abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Skin or sin? What is the issue? It is not skin. The issue is sin. Bow your heads. Open your heart. Take a moment now and just ask the Lord to open up your heart afresh. You talk to the Lord. Come on. Ask him to shine his light. To remove stony places. To remove wicked roots move in this place God move let the winds of the Holy Spirit flow blow blow God blow God God, when the storm came through, what we saw all through the land is that roots were being dislodged. Trees that had been long established were being removed. God, I pray that your wind will be so forceful that things that thought that they were not able to be removed that they were lifted and transported into the dry places the root represents a spirit and we say blow 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 holy spirit blow blow take it away god mighty breath of god take it away we don't want to miss you we don't want to miss heaven because we thought that we were abiding in righteousness and in truth. But the enemy just had us veiled because we didn't understand. But God, I thank you that we are going to trust you in the fullness of your grace. And God, I believe that you're going to blow and in your blowing you're going to release a power that we could even pray that we could pray for those who curse us for those who despitefully use us to those who persecute out of the ignorance of a darkened heart I pray God I pray that you raise up a righteous standard. God, that you will shine in us. That we'll begin to look more like Jesus. Come now, Holy Spirit. Blow! Move in this place. Move in this place.
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray for these United States of America. I pray, God, that this place who sung a song asking for your blessing will understand that the blessing of the Lord is not to be mocked. God, I pray that the purity of what you desire will be found in the United States of America. God, I pray. I pray for the high seat. I pray that it will be what you need it to be. I pray for your selection. I pray for the kingdom of God's selection. God, not just because of the man, but because of the spirit that will remain in the West Wing. Blow, blow, blow in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet and give God a praise in this place. Come on, clap your hands and begin to thank him. He said, call those things that be not as though they were. Cause things that be not as though they were. Call it forth. Move in this place. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Come on, would you sing with the worship team? Say, blow.
Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. If there's someone in the sanctuary who desires to be saved, the doors of the church are open. If you want to be rededicated to the Lord, the doors are open. If you want to experience water baptism, you need to be baptized. The doors are open. If you want to align with the house of the Lord at Caldwell Victory, and you need a covering, this is an ark of safety. We announce that the doors of the church are open. Come now, come now, come now. If you're here and you need prayer, you want someone to touch and agree with you in prayer, the doors of the church are open. If you're here virtually, and any of those things are indicative of where you stand. We have prayer counselors. There are the pastors that are posting in the, in the feed right now. They're rating. They're rating.